Hello, uh, I am here. I'm a physical therapist at the Neuroscience Center, and I'll be presenting today on physical therapy considerations for stroke survivors. The objectives for this presentation is to help better understand the path of physical therapy, falls prevention, home modifications for safety, assistive device options, mobility after stroke, orthotic considerations, wheelchair considerations, mobility post-stroke, what neuroplasticity is, and exercise post-physical therapy. We will also cover offerings that we have at the Neuroscience Center and through the INSPIRE program that could be of interest to you. The general path of physical therapy after stroke begins in the hospital while you are in the acute stages. A physical therapist will come to your room and usually perform exercises for strength and balance. Many patients who have experienced stroke will then qualify for an inpatient rehab stay. This is an intensive program that consists of three hours of therapies each day and could include physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy. From inpatient therapy, some patients will qualify for a transitional care unit, also known as a TCU, if you are unable to return home safely. A transitional care unit will have therapy about five days a week, but does not have to be three hours each day, like inpatient rehab. Other patients may not need or qualify for a TCU, and will return home after the hospital or inpatient rehab. Once at home, it will be determined if home care or outpatient care is appropriate. Home care consists of a therapist coming to your house because it's too taxing to leave. And in order to qualify for this care, you can only be leaving your house for appointments in church. Outpatient care is where you will come to therapy about two to three days a week and see a physical therapist in a clinic. This is currently my role in your recovery. At a certain point in outpatient care, you will be discharged. After discharge, it is still very important to continue exercising as your physical therapist had recommended. Falls prevention is very important starting in the hospital and through your rehabilitation process. It is very important important because one out of five falls causes serious injury like broken bones or head injury. If you acquire another injury while you are recovering from your stroke, you may lose valuable time to progress. Falls are very common and lead to many emergency department visits as three million older people are treated in the emergency department for fall injuries every year. And every year, over 800,000 patients are hospitalized due to a fall injury and subsequent head injury or hip fracture. See your doctor right away if you fall and hit your head to make sure you don't have a brain injury. The main point of this slide is that falls are more common than you would think, and this can lead to more complications on top of a stroke and slow your recovery. What can happen after a fall? Injuries from falls can decrease independence and decrease recovery after stroke. It can also lead to a fear of falling, which can turn into decreased movement because of that fear. We want you to be as mobile as ind and independent as possible. And if there is another injury that you have to over overcome, it can make rehabilitation for your stroke more difficult. Here are the risk factors for falling. Um, I'll let you read through these, but increased age is a big one. Fear of falling is a big one. Cognition is a big one. And mobility device uses is, is a big one. Um, if you have more risk factors on this list, the greater your chances of falls. So it's good to um, just understand what risk factors you have and take that into account with your chance of falls. If you feel like you are at risk of falls and you have not yet talked with your doctor, 
review medications with the doctor and see if there is need for a PT or OT evaluation for balance, dizziness, or uh, daily living tasks. Eyesight can also play a role in falls. So it is important to have your eyes checked once a year to keep seeing clearly and avoid those tripping hazards. There are home modifications that you can do in order to make your home safer and decrease the risk of falls. It includes decluttering, adding grab bars, um, railings on stairs, making sure there's plenty of light, especially in areas that are darker, um, keeping items in, in places where you can easily reach them, using non-slip mats in bathtub and on shower floors. And so if you have questions regarding the setup of your home or home modifications, consult your physical therapist or occupational therapist about this. There are many assistive devices or equipment that may be introduced during your recovery. These devices are used in order to keep you safe and as independent as possible. Every patient is different and has different needs for support. In order to choose the most appropriate equipment and make sure it's adjusted to fit you, it is important to meet with a physical therapist. There are many fall pendant options, and so if you feel that you are at a higher risk of falls, or have experienced falls, or spend a lot of time at home, a fall pendant may be a good option for you. We're not promoting any of these specific products, but wanted to provide you with options that are currently available. There's in-home voice activated systems, including an Alexa or Google Home, um, where if you felt you could talk into it saying to call 911 or a family member. Um, the Apple Watch has a fall detection setting that you can turn on. There's apps and phones that can automatically call an emergency contact when it detects a fall. Uh, depending on which ones you have, some will not detect a fall and need to be pressed, and some will detect a fall. Um, and will call. So the other pendant, there's some pendants too that can look at GPS tracking, um, some are waterproof. And so there's just multiple different ones and then also multiple different styles, including like bracelet, necklace, or just kind of an in-home like Alexa that we had talked about. Another physical therapy related topic is orthotic considerations. So a common symptom after your stroke is the inability to lift your toes up um, or control the foot. So your foot's turning inside or outside um, and then a hyperextension of the knee. An ankle foot orthosis, also known as an AFO, can be used to help stabilize your ankle and help control knee hyperextension, so that knee snapping back. If you feel like you need a custom AM, AFO, let your doctor or physical therapist know so that they can get you started on this process. If you're early in your recovery, it may be recommended to wait on an ankle foot orthosis to see how your mobility and strength progresses. Another consideration is wheelchairs. So there is a 13 month rule. Many patients will go home with a manual chair. If you've been issued a wheelchair, it's usually a rental after leaving the hospital or transitional care unit. Insurance will purchase that rental chair for you after 13 months of use. So if your wheelchair does not fit you well, and you feel like you might need a chair for the next year, two years, five years, then it's something that you might consider a custom chair. 
Insurance can cover a new wheelchair every five years as long as it is justified. So that's something to just keep in mind. If you do purchase your rental wheelchair after 13 months, that means that it is yours for 13 months. If you feel like you do need a custom chair, let your doctor and or physical therapist know so that they can get you connected for a wheelchair evaluation. Just like the ankle foot orthosis, it may be recommended to wait on a wheelchair evaluation to see how your mobility progresses. Mobility post-stroke. So there is a six month window of enhanced, what we call neuroplasticity that goes on early after a stroke. During these first six months, rehabilitation can be more effective in making the most gains for you. Improvements can still be made six months after you have your stroke, but that progress may be slower. So what is neuroplasticity? It means that we can retrain our body and we have the ability to adapt after injury and learn new ways to control a movement. So this neuroplasticity is most present that six months after your stroke. So we wanna take advantage of that time and that neuroplasticity. The main principles of neuroplasticity is use it or lose it, Use and improve it, specificity, repetition, intensity, time, salience, transference, and interference. So the three main things that we really want to focus on in our physical therapy sessions are the specificity, repetition, and intensity. By focusing on these, we are kind of taking care of that use it or lose it or use it and improve it. Um, and because we want to take ad advantage of neuroplasticity, we follow these principles um, in order to challenge our patients at the correct intensity. So after outpatient physical therapy, after you're discharged from outpatient physical therapy, a lot of our patients will ask, well, what's next? Uh, first of all, we want you to be safe. So we're avoiding falls. All right. You want to continue seeing your primary care physician and your PM and our uh, physical medicine and rehab doctor as they prescribe. Continue with your home exercise program and walking program as prescribed by your physical therapist. The other things to keep in mind that we offer here are our NeuroWell program options at the Neuroscience Center, including individual exercise program, our FES cycle program, the brain gym class, group classes, or our aquatic classes. There are all other community classes that you could also partake in that might not be stroke specific, but if you go to a community center or a gym, um, just keeping up with exercise is great. And so if you have you know, your own gym that you go to, just keep up moving is the biggest thing. There is a Stroke Inspire scholarship opportunity. So there's two months of participation in the NeuroWell Brain Gym. And so that totals $320, but the group does occur twice a week virtually. And it does cognitive challenges and physical challenges. And so it's a really nice place to exercise and go to after you've been discharged from physical therapy. Some other common questions I get are my patients saying, there's low motivation to exercise, what should I do? So low motivation and depression can be common in the stroke population. Be open with communication with your doctors and therapists about how you are mentally doing uh, and 
really understanding the reason why you want to get better and find what motivates you the most is my answer to a lot of my patients is, is find the why. Another question, can I make progress as I get further away from my stroke? Yes, you can definitely make progress as time passes. This progress might be slower after the first six or 12 months after your stroke, but we have seen evidence that patients can continue to gain mobility and strength over five years out from their stroke. Another question is, can I return to therapy after being discharged? Yes, on discharge, you and your therapist should talk about this. From, from my kind of general expectations with my patients is that you return if you either have to progress, like progress your current exercise program, like those exercises that I gave you are too easy and they're no longer appropriate. If you feel like you've regressed and you need assistance to return to the level of function you were during at the during the time of discharge uh, or your increasing falls. And then another reason would be to return if you've had a significant change in your health and so your mobility has changed uh, or you need a different assistive device or something like that. So those would all be good reasons to return to physical therapy. And in my world, a discharge is not really a discharge after a stroke. It's, it's kind of a see you later. Um, I hope it's to progress you, but we we want you to feel like you have a place that you can come back to and feel safe coming back to. So here are a few references from my slides earlier, and I really appreciate your time. Thanks for being a partner for good, and I hope you take care and enjoy the rest of the presentations. Bye.